Hi everyone, it's Debbie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I'm a reseller. I've been reselling for 17 years. I mainly sell on eBay and Poshmark. And today I have another thread up rescue box. This is the shoe box. And when I went to order, they did not have the 15 pairs of shoes. They just had 10 pairs. So I thought I would try that. I purchased it on August 31st and it arrived on September 8th. So, so it took just eight days to arrive. It came from Georgia. And that's the first time I've had it come from this location. And I paid $65.99 for it. My first two thread up shoe boxes have turned out so well. The first box that I purchased, I have sold nine out of the 15 items. I have gotten back $285.50. That box was $94.84. And my profit already is $190.66. The second box that I purchased, and those were both 15 pairs of shoes, I have gotten back $325. Cost of goods, again, $94.84. And my profit on that box so far is $230. So in all, profit on the first two boxes has been $338.44, which I think is excellent. So now I'm going to open up this box and I'm going to show you what I received. Then I'm going to time myself doing everything and I'll show you a little bit of my process along the way. I will see if there's any prep work, then I'll photograph, research everything, list everything. So, and then at the end, I will tell you what I estimate to make on this box based on sold comps and how much I think I'm making per hour on this box. So I can't wait to get started. I will open it up. And I've also done a men's rescue box and that one has been excellent also. So I'll probably order another men's box and maybe try out some other types also sometime. Okay. Ooh, I can't wait. Okay, it just says 10 pairs, $60 plus there was tax, it's still sealed. <laughs> And this looks like opening up a Christmas present. Ah, Nikes. They are a little worn, but they're really cute. And they look like something I might wear if they don't sell, but they do have a little bit of discoloration. They are size six, so they're actually my size. Um, so we'll see on this. I don't expect to get a ton for these since they do have a little discoloration, but I'll see if I can clean them up. This is why research is so important. I just thought, oh, these are a little dirty. I could just probably get $20. Found out they were Nike Air Force Ones, have an excellent sell-through rate, and they're actually worth quite a bit of money. So always do your research. And what is this? BOC, you know, I see this all the time and I just pass it, watch it be a good brand. <laughs> I am not sure. I will look it up. It is size seven. It says leather upper, so that's good. They're cute. I like the style. So there is one. There is the other one. And I will have sold comps popped up along the side, even though I don't know right now. I will have that information when this video goes out. This one has a price tag of $34.99 in it. It's lower east side. They look brand new, but not a very high original value, but they are cute. So we will see on those. So far, there's not any just super duper ones. Oh my, wow, look at that hill. That is see-through. Oh, the leather feels super soft. I wonder what this is. Let's see. Well, I cannot see, but I bet I can shine a light in there and figure it out. Made in China, size 40. Let's see. I just don't know what that is. Okay. So far. Okay, there's an old shoe thing. Okay, that's kind of gross. Hmm. I'm not super... Oh! Oh, it's Zara. Oh, cool. Zara. Ooh, maybe these will do well. Awesome. Okay, well, I will research those and find out. I'm pleased with those. Oh, I like these. These are really cute. Michael Kors. They're white. They're in really nice condition. 
super cute. Size seven medium. Hmm, leather upper. Okay, this is the, it's getting better. <laughs> At first I was a little disappointed. Okay, oh, these are pretty. What are these? Kenneth Cole, New York. I like Kenneth Cole. Pretty nice, They're, they feel like a velvet. Excellent condition. Um, such a pretty color. I can't tell what size they are, but I will have that popped up. But those are really pretty. I don't think they'll sell for a ton, but maybe like $20 or so, we'll see. It will depend on the sold pumps. And then some Clarks. Clarks can do well. The color does not look excellent though. The color does, looks kind of a little iffy. So we'll see, I'll clean these up and put some leather conditioner on them and see what happens on them. And then, Toms, I like Toms. Toms have never failed me, they always sell well. And these are in great condition. Yay, I'm happy with these. Cute pattern, what size are they? They are a size eight, so a great size. I think size eight sells well. Ooh, these are cute. I like these Nikes. Super cute. I will look up the style information. You can always get the information on Nikes off of the 10. Wow, the bottoms look in excellent condition. Hopefully these are a good selling one. Super cute. Okay, they say Air Max, size seven. So I'm hopeful on these. Ooh, these are pretty. Oh, I like these. If these are my size, that could be a winner for me. And they are my size. I might keep these. They are, what brand are they? Nine West. They're suede. They're an olive green. I probably will keep those. So, you know, there's definitely a value to that. These would probably be $100 if I went out and bought them. And so I don't buy them. And that's a savings. So super cute. I'll look up pumps try them on, but I think those would be great for me for fall. And one more, what are these? Oh my gosh, these are Sorrel. Yay, I love Sorrel. Wow, I've not seen shoes like this. Huh, those are cute. Oh my gosh, are those my size? Sorrel size. Let's see, oh no, seven and a half. Oh my gosh, I love these. I wish they were my size. Super cute, soft leather. Okay, I think these will sell well. Okay, well that's the 10 pairs of shoes. Now I'll go through and there are definitely some that need cleaned up, so I'll show you a little bit of the process, prep them, photograph, list them, and then I will have more information about how much of money I think I will make on all of these. Okay, my first step is I'm going to go through and I'm going to look up each item. When I do, I use Google Lens first and I try to see if I can pull up this specific item or items that are just like this item. Maybe it won't pull up this specific item, but it will give me keywords for other items that look just like this to help me describe it. So I keep a little notebook next to me and I will jot down information and keywords on each one when I look it up. So this is going to give me a bank of information so that when I sit down to list, I won't have to think, oh, what is this kind of hill called? Or what should I call this fabric? I will probably have a lot of that information written down for me so that I can use that as a reference. And then I will look up sold comps on eBay and Poshmark and say it sells a lot better on eBay. I will set my prices so that if it sells on either one, I'm going to get the maximum amount of money that I think I can for each of them. I will mark my listings up about 20% so that I'll have room to send or accept offers. While I am doing the research, when I find a similar item that has sold that looks really good, I will go ahead and create a draft so that when I take pictures, then I can just go in, complete my listing, and that's it. So now, we're going to go and I will prep my items and there are a few that look a little dirty. Thankfully, not a lot of cleanup is needed. I usually use a little bit of liquid Dawn, some bear grease and saddle soap, which will all be linked down below. 
First, I go through and any item that looks like it needs a little bit of shape, I stuff it full of some type of filler. Then I use a damp cloth and either saddle soap or a little bit of liquid Dawn just to see if I can get any dirt off of the surface. And the reason why I research before cleaning is because I want to know the value of each pair of shoes. That way, if it's worth a lot of money, I'm willing to spend a lot more time cleaning it up. If it's not worth very much at all, I don't wanna spend a lot of time on each item. I also really notice any flaws or imperfections when cleaning the shoes that I might not have noticed when I just glanced over them. So it really helps me determine the condition of the shoes and make sure that I don't miss disclosing anything. I also find that a lot of times I think something is scraped or dirty and it just wipes right off. So that little speck of time it takes just to wipe them down is really worth it. These Nikes are worth a good amount, but they were really clean, but I still just kind of wipe them down just a little bit. And often I'll use a magic eraser on that bottom white part, but they didn't need it. These Nikes I found out are worth quite a bit and I did not think so at all when I took them out of the box and they did not come clean when I just tried to wipe them down. So I went through and did a full cleaning on these. So I will put that video clip in next and they came came out beautifully. These Zara booties had a few minor marks on them and I could not get them out. So I will just take good photographs of them, just close that in the listing. And I'm confident that they will still sell at a great price. I also am sure to wipe down the bottoms of the shoes because I think that's important. You don't want dirty bottoms of the shoes to show when listing. Then I use a little bit of bear grease on anything that is leather that looks like it needs conditioned a little bit. I love this stuff. If ever I have anything that is really dry and cracked out, this really restores the leather. It is amazing. And what you're supposed to do is wipe a light layer on, let it sit in a warm place for I think 24 hours, and then wipe it clean with a dry cloth. And it works very, very well. The leather on these shoes look just a little dry and faded. And when I put the bear grease on, look at the difference, how much better it looks. I just love that stuff. And now moving to the laundry room to really clean the Nike Air Force ones. I fill up a little bucket in the sink of water with Liquid Dawn. I know there are other great products out there, but I found Liquid Dawn takes stains out of so many things, so I use it all the time. I remove the shoelaces so that they come clean also. If you leave them in the shoes, they'll still have marks on them. So I take those out and throw them in the water to soak for a little bit. Then I just use a little scrubbing brush that I purchased at Walmart, or sometimes I'll use a soft toothbrush, and I will go over the surface of the shoes, making sure that on the fabric part, I do not scrub too hard because I don't want to damage that fabric. Then I just continue to scrub all of the surfaces. I cut out some of the time because I didn't want to make this too long, but I probably spent about four minutes scrubbing the shoes. Then I get a mesh laundry bag and I put the shoes and the shoelaces inside of it. I put it in the wash on cold and then when they come out, they look so good. And here they are after washing them, putting the shoelaces in, I let them air dry and they look so much better. It was definitely worth the time invested on them. Then I take photos. I just set the shoes right there on my kitchen counter. I'm not using any fancy equipment or lighting and I take the pictures with my phone. And the important thing is get every single angle that you can 
take pictures of the inside, the size, the style, fabric, the bottom of the shoes, anything you can show, be sure and show it. If there are any flaws, be sure and highlight those. I like taking a picture with a tape measure to show the heel measurement or any other measurements that I find necessary. And then when I finish taking the photos, I like to use the app Photo Room to remove the background on at least the first picture. A lot of times I will take all of the pictures and load them into the app and some of them will turn out great, a few of them won't, but I want to make sure that at least my first photo has a white background. That's what the app looks like. I have the paid version. There is a free version also, but the paid version allows you to select multiple pictures at one time, which I think is worth it because it saves a lot of time and it also removes the watermark, which the watermark doesn't bother me, but just the function of being able to do a lot of photos quickly makes it worth it to me. Then I selected a classic white background. It processes all of the photos and then I just save them to my camera roll on my phone and then I am ready for my next step where I am going to complete my drafts and add in these photos. Okay, now we are to the last step of the listing process. I go and open up my draft. I already have most of the information already pre-filled in. I add my photos and just go over everything, make sure that it looks correct. I will add in a SKU number where I will know the date that I listed them, what I paid for them, and where I sourced them. I also inventory them here and put a note where I have the item so I will be sure and be able to find it when it sells. After the listing is submitted, I go ahead and click on it and review the listing to make sure that everything looks good and accurate. And that completes the listing process. Okay, now for my numbers. It took me 50 minutes to do the research and create all the drafts. It took me 20 minutes to clean the items, and some of that was over a 24-hour period. Uh, I let the shoes dry, I let the bear grease soak in, and then buffed it off the next day, but the actual time that I spent working was 20 minutes. The photos and the editing took 41 minutes. It only took me 24 minutes to list because really, I do most of the work in the drafting phase. And then I wanted to account for future time of shipping, so I counted 30 minutes. So that is 2.75 hours to do everything it takes. I have these shoes listed for an asking price of $456 with the ability to send offers or accept offers all the way down to $353. I also figured in that I could give a $2.50 46 cent shipping discount on all of them. So I subtracted that. I figured 20% platform fees because if I sell it on Poshmark, that would be the highest percentage of platform fees. I took that out which means I have the potential of getting back $262.41. Then I have to subtract my cost of goods, which was $65.99, and that leaves me with a profit of $196.73. And hopefully it will be more than that, but I am just estimating on the low end. It took me a total of 2.75 hours with a potential profit of $196.73. So that equals $71.53 an hour. And I think that is excellent to be able to source from home, do all of my listing at home, and then I even have my USPS carrier pick up my packages. So I can do that all from home and never even have to leave. So if you are in an area where you have difficulty sourcing, I think ThreadUp rescue boxes are an excellent option. So far, every single one of them has been really good. I have one more box that I am going to unbox in the next couple days, and I will share a video on that also. And hopefully it has a great earning potential as well.
Thank you so much for watching. If you receive value from this video and would like me to do more Thread Up Rescue boxes, give me a thumbs up to let me know that you enjoyed it and leave a comment if you want me to get a different type of Thread Up Rescue box, I would be happy to try out any other boxes. If you're not subscribed and would like to join me again, just hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell and it will let you know when I release new videos. And whenever any of these sell, they will be in my wet salt videos. I have a wet salt video out every Wednesday. So thank you so much for watching and everybody have a great day.